Well, hello and welcome YouTube, Mr. Robinson back here with yet another brand new exciting video, all math-based of course, and as always, it is an honor and a privilege to be serving you here today, as it is every day here in my virtual classroom. Step on inside, I just watched a home run from the Red Sox up 3-0 here in the uh, in this uh, game, <laughs> where they decide to go to the playoffs or not. Will they make it? You guys know the answer because you're from the future. I have no idea, and we'll watch that. No, we'll watch me do some math, guys. We're going to be doing a really quick one here. For me, it's going to be more drill and kill and not so much teaching it, just kind of letting it happen. I'll explain the problems, but um, this stuff, I've already done videos of this accord, sort of, but this is kind of a solution guide for another set of my students and um, of just different problems. This is um, combining like terms, adding and subtracting polynomials, and writing them in standard form. And uh, I don't know, I have like 16 or so problems, something like that. One through, I'm gonna do one through, uh, four, uh, one through 13, only 13 problems here. A lot of adding them and then a lot of subtracting them going from there. All right, let's just go and start. Number one, write the polynomial negative 23x to the seventh plus x to the ninth minus 6x cubed plus 10 plus 2x squared in standard form, and then identify the degree in leading coefficient. Now, when you are in standard form, standard form, what that does mean is descending order of degree. Every problem set that I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna put in standard form. Even when they say add, I'm gonna put them in standard form for all of them. So that means degree is in uh, terms of the exponents of each of these things here. Like this is degree seven, because the exponent for the variable is raised to the seventh. This is degree nine. This is degree three. A constant is degree zero, and this quadratic is degree two. We're gonna rewrite these terms in descending order of degree, so from highest to lowest. So x to the ninth will go first, because nine is the highest degree. So x to the ninth, and then seven, that's negative 23, x to the seventh. And then the three, negative six x cubed, then plus two x squared, plus 10. That's standard form for this thing right here. Uh, identify the degree and the leading coefficient. The degree is the degree of the leading term. So the degree of the polynomial is nine. And then the leading coefficient is the coefficient of the leading term, which is one, right? That's a one x to the ninth. Those numbers matter. If you're one of my uh, students for this, you totally know what a degree and a leading coefficient does to its graph. We know that it's a graph that, and if you saw some of my old videos, you know that this is some sort of odd degree, ninth, ninth odd degree polynomial. It might do that, it might do this a couple times, whatever it is, I don't know, because we don't know the intercepts, we don't know the factors there, but we know that it starts down, finishes up, because it's a positive odd degree polynomial. So those obviously are important when we identify those things. You're not gonna be asked to identify them in the rest of these, but I will be writing them in standard form for the rest of them. All right, numbers two through, seven numbers two through seven we are going to be adding these polynomials right here now these are quantified for eh, no real reason in particular they say this plus this but the general idea guys is that when you add a quantity that your signs don't change that we respect the signs as they are adding a positive is plus adding a positive is plus adding a minus is negative or a negative is minus i should say Adding positive plus. So, and this one is not affecting completely here. It's this quantity plus that quantity. So I'm always gonna, just for your sake for these problems, guys, I'm gonna rewrite them without parentheses in terms of what the signs are truly supposed to be. These signs are supposed to stay the same, of course. So that's 82x to the eighth plus 21x squared minus six. And then I have plus 18x plus seven x to the eighth plus negative 42x squared. That's minus 42x squared and then plus three. So once again, these signs stay as they are. When this is addition, the signs remain the same. And that's, that's really it. Just rewriting without parentheses is just a nice go-to for these. Why do they quantify in the first place? Because you might have things that are quantified in the first place. Uh, whether they're representative models, some sort of profit, cost, revenue, kind of, you know, just whatever they are. They're quantified and just don't ask, don't tell, and you know, just write them without parentheses and go from there. All right, now we're going to combine like terms and we have to find terms with matching variable and matching degree. All these have X's. The one thing this video is going to do that other ones is not is we're just only gonna have X. No X, Y, X, Y, Z, P, R, Q, things like that. They're just X's and that's how I like them. But they need to match the same degree. So this is a degree eight term. We have to find another degree eight term. Oh, like that. And we add the coefficients. 82 X to the eighth plus seven X to the eighth is 89 X to the eighth. Yes, it stays as X to the eighth. You don't change that. That changes with multiplication of polynomials and variables, but not addition. We add the coefficients there. So those two are good. I'm just gonna go and cross those out to help you see what remains here. Um, as far as standard form goes, the square, the quadratics are next, the x squareds. 
21x squared minus 42x squared. That's negative 21x squared. So those two are gone. Then x terms, I got 18x, and I think that's it there, so plus 18x. And then I have two constants, negative 6 and positive 3. Negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. So there's the result. There's my polynomial. It is in standard form, and I'm good to go. All right, let's keep moving on. Number three, same kind of thing here. And, you know, eventually I'll probably go without the uh, whole rewriting thing if it, if it helps save some time. But I do rewrite this stuff here. Ooh, x to the 12th, that's big. Um, x to the 9th, x to the 7th, 3x squared. So plus x to the 7th minus 68x squared minus x to the 9th. Once again, rewriting without parentheses because now I can properly combine like terms and I kept these signs as they were. I will do the same for the next four. So here we go. Uh, combine like terms here. The highest, well, the 12 is the highest degree. Any other 12ths? No. So negative 121 x to the 12th, that's the first term if written in standard form. What's the next highest? I see a 9. So, yeah, 9. So, oh, x to the 9th minus, I'm literally going to cross these ones out. x to the 9th minus x to the 9th cancel out. They are gone. x to the 9th minus x to the 9th is 0. There's nothing to write there. Uh, x to the 7th, I think, is next. Negative, oh, negative x to the 7th plus x to the 7th. That's 0 as well. Those are gone. And then we have x squared, 3x squared minus 68x squared. That's negative 65x squared. And then <clears throat> the 15x, so plus 15x right there. I canceled these out because they actually removed from this. I hope I didn't miss anything there. I think crossing that out can be helpful sometimes. Or reordering, or reordering the terms. Let me show you another way that you can do this if you do the reordering of them next to each other instead of doing the crossing out fashion or what have you. Uh, you still might have to cross some things out, but check this out. So this is 16 minus x squared plus negative is minus 18x squared uh, plus 7x to the fifth minus 10x to the fourth plus 5. Yes, just giving the things as they are. Let's put this in standard form but not yet combine anything. 7x to the fifth would go first there. x to the fourths would go next, so minus 10x to the fourth. And then I have... Uh, the x squareds minus x squared minus 18x squared and then the plus 16 and plus 5. so you can also reorder them right here so you can find what groups a little more quickly i guess not a lot of things combined here but the x squareds and the constants so if i uh, get this all filled out that's 7x to the fifth minus 10x to the fourth and then negative x squared minus 18x squared remember that's a negative one so negative one minus 18 is negative 19. so negative 19x squared and 16 plus 5 is 21. So there's that guy right there. Anyway, so yeah, you can do the reordering. But, you know, honestly, if some people reorder. They also cancel the out say, hey, I wrote 7x to the 5th. I wrote negative 10x to the 4th. Negative x squared, negative 18x squared, 16 and 5. So you don't leave anything out. It's just kind of up to you. Um, maybe we can try this without even taking it out of parentheses, just understanding treat the signs as they are. Like, But this time I'll reorder in standard form after. So I have like x plus 8x, that's 9x. I have 1 plus negative 1, that's 0. Those are gone. I have negative 3x squared plus 21x squared, that's 18x squared. So that's 9x plus 18x squared, or 18x squared plus 9x. Like that in standard form. And that's it. Um, because that was, I guess, smaller. So that was kind of more useful to do that. All right, here I want to make sure to, ooh, there's a lot of their quantities and all that. So let's just rewrite it without all the things. 64 plus x cubed minus 8x squared plus 7x plus 3. I mean, perception is key. If you're asking why I'm rewriting this without parentheses, if it's just the same thing with parentheses, perception is key in everything. Not having the parentheses helps just a little bit more in terms of doing what it is you need to do. All right, let's find uh, cubic is the highest right here and nothing else combines with it, so uh, I think. So I have my x cubed, that's good. Let's find our x squared. Just read it left to right, I think this helps. Our x squared, negative 8x squared, minus x squared is negative 9x squared, plus 19x squared is 10x squared. So positive 10x squared. Let's find our x's, 7x minus 7x, that's zero, those are gone. And then our constants, 64, minus two. So you're getting a lot of different approaches and what you can do. Honestly, I think that's what I do. Personally, for the most part, I just read left to right and I find them in standard form. So I go down from there and that's it. Let's see if we can do this without taking them out of parentheses. Let's see if perception really is key. Because these are pluses, I'm fine leaving them in parentheses. Um, when they're minuses, there's probably a little more we're gonna have to do. 
All right, x to the fourth. Um, let's find another x to the fourth, because that's the highest one. x to the fourth plus negative, so minus x to the fourth. So those are gone. No more x to the fourth. x cubed, negative 7x cubed plus 2x cubed is negative 5x cubed. Minus 5x cubed is not 0. That's negative 10x cubed. So we do have negative 10x cubed. Let's find x squareds. There are none. Let's find x's. Negative x plus x is 0. That's gone. Let's find constants. 2 minus 3 is negative 1 plus 1. Hold on. What was I? Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So those are gone as well. You're left with negative 10x cubed. I want to make sure those weren't supposed to cancel because I <laughs> everything else canceled. Uh, negative 7x cubed plus 2 negative 5x cubed. Yeah, that's negative 10x cubed. If that canceled as well, what would you do? Would you say everything's canceled, you're done? You would write 0. 0 would be your answer there. This is not 0. Those did not cancel. You are left with negative 10x cubed. All right, numbers 8 through 13. Now, on these ones here, guys, I am going to, for the most part, be showing you it without parentheses because now that it's a subtraction, you subtract each term in here. It's ideally a distribution of your negative that every sign in here now changes the term, the quantity following the negative, not preceding the negative. So these stay the same. That's still negative 2x plus 23x to the fifth plus 11. But now we are subtracting a positive 5. We are subtracting a negative 9x cubed. That becomes addition. So plus and subtracting a positive x becomes minus x. So these signs now change in subtraction. That's important to note that they now change in subtraction. OK, so now we do everything as we did before. You treat the signs as they are because there aren't any parentheses left. Standard form, we get the x to the fifth term first. Also happens to be the largest coefficient of uh, this coincidence. 9x cubed, nothing else combines there. That's the cubed x terms negative 2x minus x is negative 3x and then 11 minus 5 is 6. There we go and again I'm I'm not teaching you anything beyond here I'm just really doing the problems making sure you have them correct making sure I have them correct. Um, I got five more problems to do let's drill and kill let's get it done by the 20 minute time mark. All right 7x you wouldn't you'll know beforehand right you guys know the future I'm only living in the present. Distributing a negative once again in terms of changing this, those signs, that's going to be plus 10x cubed minus 8x minus 23. I wonder if problem makers are, if they have fun making up these problems, because I, I do not have fun making up problems. I'm like, I get too creative and they get too challenging. Um, and then I only have so many creative bones to go. All right, x to the fourth term is first, also once again the largest coefficient, but also the leading degree there. Uh, we have x cubed. 7x cubed plus 10x cubed is uh, 17x cubed. x squareds, no, they seem to be ditching us on x squareds a lot. Negative 14x minus 8x is negative 22x, and 1 minus 23 is negative 22. Did I miss anything? I think that's it. So that is your final result there. Let's move on forward. Um, this time, let's do it without me drawing the arrows. I can't really fit them now, but I will still rewrite it without parentheses. So 57x to the 18th minus x squared. So that's minus 6x plus, again, minus negative, plus 71x cubed minus 5x squared minus 2. Change all them signs in this one. x to the 18th, holy moly, nothing's combining with that one. 57x to the 18th, you may stay first. But you're not the largest coefficient, 71x cubed is. Unless it can combine with anything, no, but it is the next term. Plus 71x cubed, ah, you have my x squareds back. Negative x squared minus 5x squared is negative 6x squared. I got a negative 6x that combines with nothing. I got a negative 2 that seems to combine with nothing. So the only things that combined were the x squareds there, and we also got standard form. And there we are. We are done. Three more problems. You want to try one? where I don't rewrite it without changing signs here with the parentheses bits, we just combine. Let's start, 9x minus 7x, that's 2x. Negative 12x cubed minus 5x cubed, that's negative 17x cubed. Don't just write minus two, that would be wrong to write minus two, because you know why? You're subtracting a negative two, that's a plus two. So that's the kind of thing where if you don't know to do that, if you forget that, I wholly recommend you distributing the negative and rewriting without parentheses first. Now I'm not done, because so I still got to do standard form there. That's negative 17x cubed plus 2x plus 2. So yeah, I still feel like I'm writing another step anyway, unless you find your x cubed terms first. But 
I think you can get a little disorderly with that. I think it's really important that you just find a method and go. Now here, I think I would rewrite this without parentheses because there's just too much to handle now. Subtracting these negatives, subtracting those negatives. I think it's worth it of your benefit. Just rewrite without parentheses. Change all the signs if you're subtracting the quantity like this, minus 11 minus 13x squared plus x to the fourth and then minus 10x squared minus x to the fourth. So rewrite those and then go to town as you would. So x to the fifth is the leading term here still. Nothing combines with that. x to the fourths, x to the fourth minus x to the fourth is gone. x cubes, none. x squareds, yes. Negative 13 minus 10 is negative 23. And then no linear terms and you have a constant negative nine minus 11, that's negative 20. Okay, and finally, last one here. I'm not doing this word, any word problem stuff here. Lastly, I have a minus, ooh, and they have a plus. So once again, a little wrinkle there. I think it's worth rewriting without parentheses and you make sure that you treat everything as they're supposed to. Subtracting positives becomes minus and minus. Adding these means keep the signs as they are, plus six X minus 11. So there we go. I like that they threw that one in there. I would have done something similar. Uh, X squared doesn't combine with anything. Negative x minus 5x is negative 6x plus 6x is 0. Those are gone. 4 minus 11 is, that's a 4, right? 4 minus, excuse me, 4 minus 7 is negative 3. Minus 11 is negative 14. So we get 10x squared minus 14. All right, guys, that is it. And that is all. Yeah, so definitely got done within the 20 minute time slot there. This is Mr. Robinson. Thank you so much for watching. I sure hope this thing made sense. Understand the standard form stuff alongside combining like terms, distribution of negatives, different ways that you can go about doing it. It's kind of your call mentally or write out all the terms and stuff like that. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Take care. I will see you in the next one.